Welcome back to the channel. It's been a while when it comes to macOS, but today we have a new update that's available to the public, which is macOS 14.2. On our advice here, if we go into system settings, you can see software update available and right here, macOS 14.2. Now it's interesting or important to keep in mind that there's also pro video formats that has been released alongside this and the update size for the pro video formats is very very small and you can see when it comes to macOS 14.2 since this is the official public release the update size is going to be quite substantial and for me it comes in at 13.36 gigs and you can see that this update basically has a lot of new features and changes that I'm going to be showing you the download file size you can see it right here which is now 13.36 gigs so pretty much very close to the official update that we saw so since this is the actual release that it goes a long way to explain this so let me just finish updating and then we're going to see what are the new features and new changes that this update has to offer now that our device is up to date if we go into general right here and then go to where it says software update it's gonna check for an update but now you can see we are up to date and the current build number that we have on file here is 23c 64 now if this is not the one that you're seeing there's probably an update or a release candidate 2 that was released that has this updated one so if you're an rc1 and you don't see this then there is an update for you to be able to update to in terms of the new features and changes that are here the first one has to do with pdfs so this is just a sample or an illustration it doesn't have all the fields that are required but now this update has smart features that are able to detect fields which require you to input information such as your name your address and phone number email address and whatever you have that is set to your apple id that information will then auto populate and you'll be able to fill pdfs and complete tasks much faster which is something that's good now also if we open up the music application if you go to where it says playlist that just pulled up right there you can see we have favorite songs and these are songs that i just added randomly to try and create this so you do have this tab and also if you go to where it says music and go to settings right there you can see you have this section that says use listening history music played on this mac will appear in recent played and replay mixes as well and influence your recommendation and if you set an apple music profile it will also be used by or be seen by your followers as well if you have that enabled so that's good when it comes to apple music it adds favorite and this new setting subsection right here under the pictures new wallpapers we have all these like hello metallic green yellow and then orange and these are the new new wallpapers that have been added from the new iMacs as well as the MacBook Pros. You can see Pro Black has been added right here. And if I set it as my wallpaper, this is how it looks. And of course, the previous ones have been carried over as well. And this is how the new ones look if you were to set them up. For now, I'll just keep it on this Pro Black for the MacBook Pros. So it's good they've added that. Also, when it comes to the widgets, if you pull up your widgets section, there's this pop up screen that says what's new in widgets and if you click there you can notice the widgets that we have here we can raise it up and it's alphabetical here so if we go to the weather section right there you can see some of the newly added widgets we have this one that has details you see the chance of precipitation and uv we have daily forecast and then we have this sunset as well and you can see different sizes as well and this one shows you more of a weekly view as you can see right there so monday tuesday wednesday and thursday and then this one is a sunshine so they've added three new shapes and then when it comes to the actual application the weather app you can see how the location looks and if you go down you will see that we have a wind map right here and you see here there's a pop-up screen that will tell you click for more details and see hourly weather for the next 10 days right here so for example if you wanted to see wednesday you can click on wednesday and be able to see it if 
you want to see like uh, today or so on you can be able to see it right there if we click somewhere that doesn't have anything it goes back to this and if you see the wind map when you click on it right here it has more information right there and we have moon phases bulb that has been added so if you go down and you click on this you can see today and the actual moon phase that's current as i record this video and if you go down you can select a specific date for example if you select the 12 right there or if you select like the previous day you'll be able to see the different moon phases according to that so it's good that they've added added this and now if we go back into our system settings and go to where it says control center right here you will notice here under music recognition they've added this shazam, shazam icon and you can choose to have it show in the menu bar this top menu bar as you can see there or if you want you can choose to show it in the control center so now you see how it looks and if i hide it there you notice it disappears from the control center i think it's a pretty cool thing to have it in your control center i don't want my menu bar to be cluttered so i'll leave it here for now and if there's a song that's playing i'll be it will be easy for me to be able to identify it and be able to see it now when it comes to this update one of the major things that has been added has to do with contact key verification and the way you find this if you go into your settings and you go to your apple id you notice contact key verification if you click there and you try and enable contact key verification it will tell you all about contact key verification and put simply contact key verification is uh, like encrypting your iMessage so that your iMessage that you send to someone is able to be verified that it's going to the actual person and not being intercepted along the way. So it's basically like uh, a handshake that it does. And if you want to click here where it says continue, you notice it will tell us and look according to all the devices that I have on my Apple ID because this is supported on the Apple Watch, it's supported on the iPhone and on the Mac as well. So here it's telling me my iPhone 6S is not updated and it won't be able to be updated to the latest version so for this reason it won't be able to support this contact key verification because the iMessage version or iMessage app on it won't be able to support now if you don't want to turn it on from your apple id and you want to turn it on for a specific person or chat you can basically just go in the messages or in the chat of that person and then if you go all the way down you click turn on contact key verification you notice the same pop-up shows up here and you basically it's a, like another way or another method you can use to turn on contact key verification for a specific chat which is something that's good so i'll close it here and just to show you here when it comes to chats if you want to reply to a specific message you can put the thumbs up right there or if you want to add a sticker to this specific chat you can see for example i'll add this one and the sticker goes to that exact message which is something that's good. This is the clock app here and you can see here you have timers that has been slightly updated and you can create custom timers right here which allows you to create according to your need or you have presets that range from one minute all the way to two hours and you can create multiple timers which is a good thing now with mac os if you go to your keyboard right there and you want to choose a specific language i'll be happy to let you know that they fixed or made uh, bug fixes when it comes to the simplified chinese as well as semi support so if you want to use that you can basically go in and then you can choose the language that works for you and see if it's added in the new mac os update or supported now that's good also when it comes to the recent updates i'll be happy to let you know that apple actually updated a number of their applications so you notice here i have a number of updates and some of them you can see like final cut pro has recently been updated motion iMovie and for example when it comes to Final Cut Pro you can see some of the things that they fixed which have to do with the new codecs that we actually downloaded when we were updating to this and also some of them have to do with dynamic timeline as well and also when it comes to like compressor and other apps they've also been updated as well so once you update check your uh, app store to see if there is any other updates that have been
been added. Basically, that is all for me when it comes to macOS 14.2 that I'm using and also using to record this video on my MacBook Pro. macOS 14.3 will be coming out in beta pretty soon. So if that's something that you wanna get to see and keep up to date with, definitely hit subscribe and uh, keep in mind that this update also in the background has some stability and bug fixes and the Apple security page will soon be updated with the latest security patches that this update has resolved. So that's about it for me guys. If you like this video, leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video pretty soon. Peace.